What's my mother name? What's up guys, KDub175 back with another Pokemon Duel video and Arcanine is actually here in the game now. Not just a teaser anymore guys, we have Arcanine early access and we're definitely going to take a look at that. But first, we have the Orbiter Hall and it's actually going to be a fire gym. Uh, I, we all thought it was going to be a rock gym, but fire types are going to get a plus one MP and the rock types are going to get a plus 20 on the white and gold. It's going to be um, in effect till 759 UTC on the 24th. Right after that, the gym is going to kick in. So make sure you're playing, test your decks out, work the kinks out before the actual gym starts, and you are going to be able to get three rare metal rare cubes, which is going to be pretty nice. You know, uh, they're worth about 4,500 experience each. So it's, it's a nice way to kind of, you know, get some experience to level some figures up. So definitely do that and be prepared for the gym. So Arcanine, early access. What does that mean? Well, the figure is almost here, but you can get the figure and other items and basically take advantage of some value sets that they're selling as of right now. But it is going to be available in the recommended boosters and you will be able to um, craft the figure in the material exchange. So as of right now, though, if you want to use Arcanine in the fire gym, you're going to have to purchase it with real money. And they have three different packages here. They have the premium, they have the deluxe, and then they just have the base set for Arcanine. So in, on Twitter, I originally tweeted, I said, skip the middle option. Either go for the top or go for the bottom. I know there's going to be some people that's just going to purchase all three of them because they want to get three Arcanine. And hey, that's, that's up to them. The way I feel about this, and I know there's a big debate, guys. There's a lot of mixed feelings. You know, a lot of people think it's a cash grab. You know, it's going to widen the gap even further between pay-to-play and free-to-play. But I think this is good for the game, guys. And, you know, I know it might not be a popular opinion, but hear me out, okay? If you're going to purchase gems at the base rate, okay? And I know not a lot of people do that, but gems are normally $79.99 plus tax here in the States, which is about $85 with tax. You get 1,960 gems. So for 500 gems out of that stash is over $20 for a 10 pack. So if you are gonna just wait and only purchase gems during the full gem sale, which is gonna be again $85 for 3,165 gems, it's still about $13 a 10 pack for one 10 pack guys. And if you're only going to purchase gems on the 80% off, you get it just under 1,600 gems. If you buy all three packages, you get two for 399 for 360 gems each. And then you get the 799 for 876 gems. With tax, it's about $17. You're able to open three 10 packs, and then you have like 96 gems left over. I think you get 15, what is it? 1,596, something like that. Just under 1,600. You can open three 10 packs. And how many times have you guys opened three 10 packs and you do not get the figure that you're pulling for? Like it happens to me quite a bit. Like Lorantis, I haven't been able to pull even Agron from this banner, even though it's not a, a new figure. But I think this is good for the game, guys. And I don't mind seeing this. The only thing that's annoying is that they're doing the gym now. And if you want to use Arcanine in the gym, you're going to have to purchase it. Um, but you can wait. The sale's going to be around for about 15 days. We'll take a look at it. And the new banner is not going to be coming till June 1st. So you can wait. You can open some boosters, see if you pull it. And if you really want the figure, then you have the option to, to just purchase it outright. Or if you don't want to gamble your gems away, say Arcanine's going to be the only figure that you want from that banner, it's definitely going to be a lot cheaper to purchase it just for the $16.99 than spending 4,000 material. Because even with the gem sale, guys, um, you know, I think it's around $100 for 4,000 material. I think that's what it works out to. About $100 is what 4,000 material is worth. So it's something to think about, guys. I think it's a good option to have. I don't like how they you know, made it to where they're going to have the gym in effect right now, and we're not going to be able to use Arcanine unless we purchase the figure. I, I don't like that aspect, okay? I think they should should have waited for the gym, or, you know, I, like, I like seeing this option, like I do, because there are some banners where I'm like, hey, I just want this one figure, then you got to sit there and spend 200 gems per quad, 
or you have to open a couple 10 packs and just hope for one or two figures that you want to pull and the rest is pretty much trash for you and it's, it's just a big waste so i do like it and the fact is is if you know you want to purchase the top one you're doing it all for the resources in the ex cube if you don't need the gold or the metal you can go for the middle one if you just want the ex cube and the figure and if you just want the figure you can go for the bottom one. i originally thought the middle one was not an option like you shouldn't get the middle one but i think it's just up to you on what you want to get out of it so let's take a look at arcanine we got the 120 right with the gold we knew it was gonna like i had a strong feeling it was gonna be 120 attack and we knew it was gonna be a gold because everybody knows extreme speed and there was a pretty good possibility it was gonna have a white attack i wasn't sure whether or not it was gonna have a blue or a purple but it does have a purple there's definitely some miss on there but at level five it's gonna have eight miss it looks like i originally thought it was gonna have eight miss and you were gonna get rid of the uh miss between the 80 and the 120 but i've seen some figures leveled up and it looks like you're gonna have two uh miss segments at level four leveling up the 120 it's a huge 120 and what makes this figure awesome it's not going to become a 3 mp i was kind of hoping for that kind of utility uh kind of like entei but a little bit different but if the uh, battle opponent has a status effect, it's going to shift them one slice segment like they're confused. So basically, when battling Arcanine with a status effect, you're battling with two status effects. So um, if the battle opponent is going to be confused, they're actually going to, the wheel's going to respond like it would battling Poliwhirl. It's going to be shifting two segments. And it's actually going to be really good for Swablu's. Like, a confused Swablu is super annoying, or Altaria. So they're going to be confused most of the time hitting white, shifting into the blue. You can't kill it, right? Well, against Arcanine, it's going to shift one more slice, and you're going to be able to knock it out, hopefully. Because it has a status effect, and I believe they don't benefit from their ability. So, in the shop there, purchase gems. You can go ahead, pick whichever package you want. If you are going to purchase it, I'm not sure that I'm going to even do it. I may do it for the video, uh, but not in this video. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But these booster packs are going to be available till June 1st. And as you guys seen, there's 15 days left on the Arcanine sale. So... You know, the new banner is going to be here before those sales end. I don't think that you need it to be competitive in the gym, guys. I really don't. I think there's plenty of heavy white attackers like uh, Regirock, like Terrakion. Um, like, there's plenty of counters to the Arcanine. I don't think it's a must-have. And there's a video, I'm not going to show it in this video, but it's from the developers that show you kind of how the the figure works i'm sure you've all watched that by now and they said there's going to be more synergy to come so we just have to wait and see what the new banner is going to hold like i don't think you're going to need it in the gym yeah it's going to be really fun to have a 3 mp with a huge gold and if you're battling a player that has a lot of fire types you're going to be able to just like go right through them but if you have chandelure if you have lampet you know, those are going to kind of work the same way. They just don't have a 120 attack wheel. So talking about some figures, let's get into the main portion of this video, the deck prep video. You know, fire types are going to get a plus one MP. Rock types are going to get a plus 20. And um, I think we're going to be covering the fire types first. There's not a ton of rock types and there's not a ton of fire types. I mean, there's a decent amount. But uh, we're just going to be covering mainly the figures I think that are going to be the best. Mega Blaziken. This is why I'm actually happy to have a fire gym. Even though we were kind of preparing for a rock gym, we thought Mega Blaziken. I've had it for a while, and I think it's pretty trash. But at 3 MP, this thing's going to be amazing. So, like, you know, going right through figures, burning them all in the same turn... So paired up with the Arcanine, this could actually be pretty good. You know, you're just going to be running around, burning everything, and then you can attack it with Arcanine. And, um, you know, you, you probably have some pretty easy matchups. You know, if they're confused and burned at the same time, that's pretty much how the, their wheel is going to behave. And I definitely recommend leveling up the Flare Blitz, the Purple's Trash, Jet Kick is Jet Kick, but there's not going to be a ton of gold in this meta of the fire gym is you know outside of the arcanine 
there's not a ton of gold options. So I think it's going to be up to you whether you want to choose the purple or the gold, but I recommend leveling up one of those um, just to, you know, kind of control which wheel slice disappears if you become burned. Blaziken is going to be awesome. 3 MP. You can use Combuskin as a 3 MP as well and try to go for the evolution, but if you are going to be using Mega Blaziken, I think using regular Blaziken just outright is going to be fine. Just so you don't have to worry about trying to go for that evolution. And if you're not going to be able to get the evolution, then you're wasting two plate slots with the Mega Blaziken plate. So, like, I think this is going to be a really good figure in the gym. And again, leveling up the Flare Blitz, I, I would probably go that route. Though the Cyclone Kick could definitely save you against some of the heavy attacking uh, rock types. Mega Charizard Y. It's not going to get a buff. But Charizard is going to be a 2 MP right out the gate. So you're not going to have to worry about evolving from Charmeleon. And uh, you are going to be able to soar. Mega Charizard X, you know, it has a different utility, I guess, with trying to temporary, uh, temporarily exclude Pokemon. But I like the uh, Mega Charizard Y. Shiny ho -Oh. We haven't seen this Pokemon for a while. It's going to be a 3 MP. It's a fire type. I definitely recommend leveling up the Rainbow Wing, 3 MP, try to get some cheese wins, some surrounds, but the ability for the Chandelure, for the Lampet, you know? I think that we're going to be seeing those Pokemon. They're ghost types. You could potentially make them spin and knock them out if your Shiny ho -Oh gets knocked out. So it's an option, guys. It is for a runner. Incineroar. It's going to be a pretty cool 3 MP. It has the Suplex, kind of for some survivability. The Darkest Lariat can definitely cause a lot of problems if uh, you're, for your opponent if they don't set up properly. The suplex can cause some problems for you when attacking, so you need to be careful with that. Um, also, you're going to be able to bring it off the bench if a ghost type or a Pokemon with a status effect is capping your entry point. And I think you could probably go for the evolution from Toracat. Get that 130 up to a 140 with the fake out. You're going to be able to evolve, but... I don't know how many people are going to be purchasing the Arcanine, but Arcanine, as you guys seen, has a huge gold wheel slice. Litten could be a pretty easy evolution, so if we are going to be seeing a ton of Arcanine, I think Litten could definitely be easier to evolve than the uh, Torcat. And if you're going to be able to evolve all the way up to the Incineroar, that Incineroar is going to be pretty tough to deal with. Chandelure, definitely going to be an MVP runner. It's going to be a 3 MP. It's guaranteed to burn. So, again, there's some synergy with that Arcanine. There's a lot of Pokemon that leave a burn if they get knocked out. It's a 110, though. It's not going to be doing a ton against any Rock types, for sure. Those Rock types are going to be super strong. But, um, you know, the... What is it called? The uh, Branded. Yeah, the Branded... SHD was, you know, making it work for quite a while. He was, you know, but the the thing was is the duels took way too long. But, um, hey, these things are going to be 3 MP now. Lampet ran alongside one Chandelure because you're not, you're probably not going to be able to evolve into uh, from Lampet to the Chandelure. But <clears throat> I have three Chandelure and I have three Lampet, so I could definitely run a full branded deck. And Litwick is going to be 2 MP. You're still going to have to jump out like Empoleon. You're not going to be able to attack. But then after that, it is going to be 2 MP. Easily evolved into the Lampet. You're going to be able to burn them. Then immediately right after, you're going to be able to move through that battle opponent and brand them. Then if the Chandelure gets knocked out, you're going to knock out every Pokemon that's branded. And if you land the Blue Slice, you're going to be able to pick a Pokemon that has the branded marker. And then you're going to be able to choose the knock, you know, wh whichever Pokemon you want. Say there's three Pokemon that have a branded marker. You can pick any one of those and knock it out. They're 3 MP. They can move through figures. I think they're going to be pretty good, guys. Uh, definitely, if you have them, consider them. Moltres. <coughs> I would rather have the Chandelure, to be honest. But Moltres, it has the Soar ability. 3 MP. 110. Honestly, if you have another one that's like level 1 and you have one that's at level 4... Most of us were leveling up the 110, but I think you should level up the purple or the blue for survivability. I'd probably go with the purple so you can try to burn, like, you can burn a whole line of Pokemon with Moltres. So, 
I mean, it's an option. It's it's as a runner, guys. It is. It's there to put pressure. Mag Mortar. The Flame Gun is amazing. We all know that. But the 60 is a problem. I think this is kind of a kamikaze Pokemon. To burn or knock out, right? You, you're going to make peace with the fact that it's probably going to get knocked out. But hopefully, you're going to be landing that Fire Punch and burning the opponent. And then you can, you know, use some synergies with your Lampet to, you know, move through them after to put a Branded Marker, or if you have the Arcanine. And then if the Flame Gun goes off, then it's kind of a, you know, happy surprise. Reshiram is going to be a 3 MP. Running the Dragons could be an option, you know. I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not super strong, but it has the Fly. It's a 3 MP. And you could run a clear weight plate to, uh, you know, try to get it off the bench sooner. Maybe a long throw with the Tapu Bulu. Typhlosion, I think, is a horrible Pokemon. I really do. If it's one of your few fire types that you have, I mean, hey, it could be a choice to if you really are desperate, but I don't like the figure. Delphox, to be honest, I like better just for the fact that you may be able to cycle plates. Um, more importantly, a Mega Plate. So... I don't know. The Flame Kinesis being able to move poker Pokemon around, you can burn them. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't really like it still. Delphox, it just it needs a buff. Entei is going to be a 4 MP, guys. 4 MP. Like, you wait. Unless they're going to fix it between the Orbiter Hall and the gym. And we're going to jump into a duel, and you're going to see it. You know, it, it's not fake news. 4 MP off the bench, guys. Just like Deoxys Speed Form. And it's got a 120. It can burn. The purple's pretty trash. The stomp is trash. I, I kind of like Entei for that 4 MP, though. You could definitely pair it up with the Zorark. I think Zorark's going to be amazing. Uh, we'll get to that. It's not a fire type or a rock type. But um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But Heatran is going to be a 3 MP. I originally leveled up the Iron Head for the 110 because I figured the Magma Slide was already big enough. But now that 110, I mean, back then when it first came out, the 110 was pretty good. Like 110 was about right where it was at outside of Deoxys attack form. But uh, definitely go for the Magma Slide. It clears up your entry points. It's going to be a decent runner. The 110 is not doing much now. Infernape. It's going to be pretty weak, but it has the Mock Punch. Not a lot of gold, so it's going to be nice to have that gold. The purple could potentially turn it into a 4 MP. Normally, the devs prevent that from happening. 3 MP is normally the max, but Entei's getting 4 MP off the bench. And this thing, it says 1 MP, or, you know, plus 1 MP for one turn. That drive kick can be a problem. You know, you can take the goal if you knock out their goalie. You know, you can get surrounds. The drive kick's super annoying to deal with, so be careful against it. Heat more, it's going to be super trash. Talonflame, also going to be trash. It's going to have a solid gold wheel for one attack, but it's most likely going to lose to a 50. Urukuryo, ballet style, is going to have high survivability, 3 MP, and if you want to evolve things on your bench, you also get a plus one for every fire type on the field, yours and your opponents. All your fire types are going to get a plus one for each fire type that's on the field, so it's going to be a decent runner as well. I like Urukuryo, Urukuryo, ballet style, but don't sleep on Infernape, guys. Because that thing can be a problem. If you see that thing coming, do not have a figure on your goal. Like, have your figure sitting next to the goal. Getting into the rock types. Nihiligo. Is it going to be viable? Like, what about Terrakion, right? Guys, I think Ultra Beast decks are going to be able to do fine in this gym. And if we're seeing a ton of fire decks for 3 MP, like, Deoxys could actually be a problem. Like, Deoxys was a major problem and you could put a uh what is it a hardstone plate on the nile ego and i think it keeps it even when it goes to the ultra space reggie rock is going to be a monster 170 damage and then it's going to have a 110 the explosion is pretty much the only drawback because you can you know be knocking a ton of figures out get up next to the goal then hit explosion if you're not going to be able to win it's you know it's annoying but there's not going to be a ton of blue to use the lock on ability but it's just super strong i have two of them i'm definitely going to be using two of them in my deck terrakion i think it's going to be pretty nice it's going to have a base 150 stone edge and then a 121 then you can put a hard stone plate on it for another plus 20 terrakion is going to be a monster like these rock types are strong <laughs> Agron, man. 
like I cannot get aggro on, man. I'd really love to try him out with the Mega. But it's going to have a base 160, and then it's going to have a 110 for the, uh, what is it, the uh, Heavy Slam. So, you know, Aggron. If you have him, put him on your deck. He's he's going to be tough to deal with, though he's not impossible to knock out. Just tough to deal with. Rhyperior for the Bulldozer, but he's only 1 MP. The plus 20 is not going to mean a whole lot. I don't, I don't recommend Rhyperior at all. Lycanroc, Midnight Form, is going to have a base 110, which in a way kind of sucks, because that's going to make it just too strong to be able to reliably attack the Zorark. But the counter is going to be really good. Level up the counter, and if you use Carmonite, decrease the roar. That's what I did. Lycanroc, Midday Form, is going to be a perfect counter to the Arcanine, guys. It's going to have a 120 white, and then it's going to have an 80 gold. So the only weakness is really going to be the, uh, the purple. So, Midday Form, it's a rare. I think it's going to have no problem knocking out uh, the Arcanine if you don't have, like, Regirock or Terrakion. Onyx, I think could have a decent matchup for the Zorark if we see that, but you're mainly going to be wanting to use Metal Coat, evolve into Steelix. Now, think about it. It's going to have a, a base 110, then plus 20 from the gym. It's going to be a base 130 on the Gyro Ball. Then it's going to get another plus 30. So, it could have a 160 attack, and then you could... You know, use a Hearthstone. Like, Steelix is a problem. But I don't recommend Hearthstone because with that pull in, he goes to the bench and then you lose it. Tyranitar. It's only going to be a 1 MP. You have to evolve from Pupitar. It's going to have a base 70. If you want to use a Hearthstone, you can get it up to a 90. With chain levels, like a chain level 9, it'll have a 99. Chain level 10 is 100. So, I don't know. It might be a good matchup for Zorak that doesn't have a lot of chain levels. And uh, then you can get the T-Tar. We'll take a look at Mega T-Tar in the Material Exchange because I don't have it. Armaldo is going to be a free-to-play figure that you get from the hotels. <clears throat> it's going to have a base 70. Then it's going to have a 150 that's really small. But I don't recommend it. But if you're struggling, I think it could do okay. Rock Rough, it's going to be nearly impossible to evolve this thing. You might be able to knock out like a Lampet or use an X-Speed if somebody has like a Litwick or something. I don't know. It's, it's going to be tough to evolve. But Geodude, this whole line is going to be really, really clutch for free-to-play players. You evolve off of the self-destruct. Okay, so this thing's going to have a base 70 when evolved, right? Because it's going to be at 50, 60, 70 with the gym. But you can evolve off the purple. The Golem is going to have a base 80 from evolution. Then from the gym, it's going to have a base 100 spinner. A 100 spinner. It's only going to be a 1 MP, but my god, this thing... For an uncommon, I definitely rate it. If you're free to play, it's something you may want to think about if you're lacking other good EX figures. Uh, Laron is going to be tough to evolve. I don't recommend it. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at the material exchange. See if we missed any fire types that I may have not had or went up against. I didn't see any. And Mega Titar. This thing is just going to be insane. Okay, so it's going to have a base 150, 60, 70 from the gym, 80. That's going to have a 190 mountain topple. Now, you can use the Shaman Landform with any Mega. Like, basically, you can put together any good decks using any good Megas that are in the game. But Mega Titar could be a problem. But I just don't think it's going to be worth it to have to try to evolve from Pupitar. Now, I wanted to talk about Lorantis, okay? Lorantis, you got to put together a grass deck. It can knock things out that have weight. You can use Tapu Bulu, even though it, it kind of is like counterintuitive. Bulu gets rid of weight. You're going to be able to attack into a Blaziken if they have the Cyclone Kick. So that's going to be the good thing about Tapu Bulu, okay? And there's definitely going to be a lot of Blaziken running around. People probably expanding the Cyclone Kick. So when you attack... You're going to be able to just stay on the field. Like, the Cyclone Kick is not going to do anything. Magma Slide is not going to move you. So, that's going to be a good thing for Bulu. Then you have the Long Throw, or the uh, the Full Swing. I always call it Long Throw, the Full Swing. And you can use the Ula Ula Wish is something to think about, too, if you really need to get rid of an ability or something. Pre-Marina basically synergizes with Round, Swablu, which is annoying. Please don't run Swablu. But... The um, Sparkling Aria is going to make all fire types spin, so I don't recommend running fire types with this. If you do, maybe only run one, but they'll spin, 
and if they land the specific attack, they're going to get three weights. So you can potentially get a weight win. Malamar is something to think about because if you go back to every gym that we're ever in, most people run duplicates or even triplets of the, of one figure. So you could potentially, you know, assuming they don't have Coco, sleep an entire deck, um, you know, after a couple turns. Could be pretty tough. Zapdos, I rate with Coco. There's going to be a decent amount of purple. You can block Moltres, Deoxys attack form, and a chain level 10, a 140. Going to be able to knock out most, you know, fire types. Even a, a Cosmo Energy deck could be viable against a mainly fire type deck. Eveltal is definitely going to be something to consider to block the Chandelure and the Lampet from being able to just you know, move all over the board. You're going to be able to stop them if you have other dark types like Incineroar, like Sableye. They will also be able to block the Chandelure in the Lampet. So I think it's something to consider. Plus, you can get some Dark Mist, run with the Zora Arc. You could have a pretty decent dark deck, guys, really. Uh, Mew. I rate Mew. There's going to be Blaziken. Mew is going to be a great matchup for Blaziken. Definitely. Uh, especially Blazikens that have not evolved because their jet kick is only 20. When they evolve and they have a couple chains, and eh, it could be a problem. But uh, yeah, I rate Mew. I definitely do. I rate Sableye. Sableye is always going to be a pretty good figure. I like Sableye against a Blaziken that has not evolved. Mr. Mime, you're going to be able to block, again, the Chandelure line, the Lampet, running around. Your whole succession of Pokemon that are connected to Mr. Mime are going to block all Pokemon from passing by. Not just the ghost types, like any Pokemon is not going to be able to pass by. And uh, you can confuse things with that mysterious wall. The whole Curlia line, uh, you know, Gardevoir line, you're going to be able to block the ghost types. Poliwrath, I think, is a good figure to try to run with the Arcanine if you are going to purchase it to try it out in the gym. Uh, it's just going to be nice to automatically confuse things and then kind of like the one-two punch like confuse them with the polyrath and come in with the arcanine boom knock them out um i like the uh tangela with the lorantis you know you can get that weight synergy to be able to knock them out no matter what the mantis with a grass knot anything with grass knot i think is going to be good in this gym a lot of heavy hitters guys and then we have the vibrava be able to slow down the rush if you don't have like you know the other pokemon that i mentioned earlier bronze or to be able to knock out the three mps with that heavy slam so guys we're going to be jumping in to a duel i have two reggie rock i have the zorark i have the blaziken that has the mega blaziken evolution we have the lampet that evolves into the chandelure and we have the tapu coco which is mainly there as a three mp that can go through figures and it has gold because we don't have a lot of gold and i didn't pick kimbuskin to evolve because i wanted to be able to play the mega blaziken plate whenever I wanted to and didn't have to worry about trying to double chance and evolve. We're going to be going up against Emperor, also has double Reggie Rock. He has a Kimbuskin into the Blaziken, so he doesn't have a Mega. Then he has the Agron, then he has the Moltres, and he has the Entei, which is going to be a 4 MP off the bench. It's pretty insane. And we basically have the same plate loadout, except he's got a gold block and I have a Mega Blaziken plate. So uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. He definitely has a strong deck now this is why i recommend having at least two runners like every gym you want to have at least two runners unless you're really skilled like running a long throw you know how to set up properly but like i like having at least three runners like no less than two for this situation see look at this ente just sprint off the bench all the way to the side like my side of the board and he can instantly threaten game See, this is why I like having three runs. So not only am I going to be able to go defensive with Coco, hopefully he doesn't attack. See, look, I mean, we're at risk of getting shut down. We don't have a long throw play either. We have a double max revive, though. Maybe I should go in and change that. And he's going to be able to block us off. So that's why I went defensive with Coco, because either way, we were going to get blocked by that aggro. So now I'm going to come out and attack with Reggie Rock and Multi Blast. That was our only bad roll. So now we really need to get rid of this Entei. So I'm going to double chance. I don't want to risk it, even though we have an extra turn before we get surrounded by the Agron. He's going to be able to bring him back up. So I wanted to make sure we get the knockout, and we do. We get rid of that Entei, clear up the entry point. Now we're going to be able to bring more Pokemon out. So let's get our Regirock out. Let's go. One's a level 5. The other one's a level 4. They're both, they have a chain level. One, I put the chain level into the uh, Multi Blast. The other one, I put it into the Hammer Arm. See, Explosion goes off. You know, it's, it's, it's okay in that situation, 
but when you're up attacking <laughs> and you're next to the goal and you hit that explosion, it's so annoying. It really is. Like, I hate explosions. So we're going to swing around. We're going to try to get rid of this Reggie Rock. Let's go. Blaziken's going to be a monster. Now, he's probably going to block me with Aggron is what I'm thinking. So, like, yeah, I already had it in my mind. I'm going to go Mega Blaziken. I'm going to take the entry. I'll be threatening game if we survive. Just, I don't want to hit the Jet Kick. I mean, yeah, he could hit us with that Heavy Slam as well. And we're going to hit a miss. A one miss. Blaziken. Like, Mega Blaziken. What? Like, really? <sighs> Feels bad. See, that's the problem with Megas, too. I mean, they take up two plate slots. And whenever they fail, I, like, it feels pretty bad. But it's fine. It's fine. Like, we had our chance. Agron is going to be burned. So we can, you know, if we had our Lampet up there, you know, we could potentially, you know, we're going to have to move up next to it. Then we're going to have to attack, then move through it. So that's why I said if you guys have Agron, Agron's going to be pretty good. But let me know wh what you guys think of this deck down in the comments. Um, I think there's going to be plenty of deck builds to try out. And, like, I could probably sit here for another half an hour just putting together different uh, deck builds. But this is kind of my first attempt at the Fire Gym. I think it's a good deck. I'm not too sure about the Lampet. Um, I could easily replace the Lampet, I think, for something else. So he's going to attack. Like, I could have stayed, but I'm like, you know what? Come on, Zorark. Ugh. Feels bad. Like, he could have hit the explosion. It could have been good, but we wanted that cross counter. We're sitting on a double max revive. We have two max revives. Trying to decide at this point. I'm like... Yeah, just <laughs> give Zorark another chance, you know? So he's going to move over with the Entei. So we're going to be able to uh, try to set up a surround on this Kimbuskin. And he's going to X-Speed. So I'm definitely going to switch in this situation. Hoping that he doesn't land the Cyclone Kick. Woo! And Kimbuskin's going to land a miss. Feels bad. Feels good for us, though. Like, feels real good. <laughs> so, we're going to swing around. We Look at that. We got a perfect defensive line set up. Now, we have a surround set up on the Entei. But the, the opponent, Emperor, has another Max Revive. And he's going to back up with his Moltres. So, we have to be careful here. We cannot move our Coco because then our uh, Zorark would get surrounded immediately. So, that was good. I, I attacked. We got the knockout. Now we're going to be able to go up threat and game. I have to survive here. Whoo! And we both hit a miss. Whoa. And he's going to attack. All we need is a purple. Let's go. He's going to land the protect. And we're going to land a purple. And that's going to be GG with the Lampet on the goal versus Agron. Like, maybe I don't need Agron, you know? <laughs> no, it was pretty lucky. It was pretty lucky. We both missed. Again, guys, let me know in the comments. What do you think of this team? The double Reggie Rock is that going to be something like really good, or should I be thinking outside of the box for different figures? I could be trying Eveltal with the Sableye and the Zora Arc. I think that's going to be a pretty good option. Again, I'm debating on replacing the Lampet, but I kind of like it, and I'm also debating on putting a Chandelure in for one of the Reggie Rock. I don't know. I might have to test it out and play around with it. But guys, I think that's going to wrap this video up. Please leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it and if this helped you in deciding on your gym deck. Subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. And follow me on Twitter at KDub175 for bonus content and further discussions. And until the next one, later guys.